WWE Payback. NXT TakeOver. <laughs> Alex Riley on the Fallout panel. <laughs> There's no way that a major league team would let a minor league team show them up. Let's hope that stays true. Payback has way too much to live up to after NXT TakeOver. And they started off with a mask versus hair match featuring El Torito taking on Hornswoggle. Now I really appreciate it when I see things that I've never seen before and I've never seen a referee catch a little person and throw him onto another little person. That was pretty fun. Another bit that was kind of fun was when the wrestlers were just jumping out of the ring onto the other wrestlers. I really wish that would have went on more. That would have been funny. Of course El Torito is wearing another mask and Hornswoggle pulls it off but loses when El Torito does a moonsault onto him. The most painful thing about this match was when El Torito was shaving Hornswoggle's head. Now I used to shave my head every day for about two years and I would never want to go through what Hornswoggle went through because that just looked terrifying. I will say though, genius putting on the shaving cream while he's shaving his head with an electric razor. Those disposables though, they looked like a Schick. Schick 3s are what I used to shave my head with. Who was that, Michael Cole that was like, oh my god, that's a disposable razor. Not all disposables are bad, Michael Cole. By the way, I want to be a coal miner again. Turn heel. The opening contest for the night is Sheamus defending his US title against Cesaro. And of course we've heard a whole bunch of CM Punk's chants tonight and even Paul Heyman acknowledged it. Now I'm really excited about this match because I figure Sheamus and Cesaro could hold up to the NXT TakeOver. Eh, they did pretty good. What you need to do right now is go on Twitter, find at Inzano, and you're going to tweet to him. Don't you just love it when Sheamus does his clubbing fists on the ropes to his opponent? It's hashtag amazing. He hates that so much. This is what he gets for not coming tonight. This is the first time my stream on the WWE Network has ever died out a few times. I wasn't too happy about that, but I made it. JBL mentioned Scott Steiner. I got to see one of my favorite finishers, the Pearl River Plunge. I guess it's not really a Pearl River Plunge because Cesaro didn't sit with it. The nicest move of this match was an Irish Curse Backbreaker, which I'm probably saying that because I didn't see it coming, so da -da 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 -da. thumbs up. After the King of Swings swung, after the King of Swing swung Seamus. After the King of Swing, after the King of Swing swung, after the King of Swing swung Seamus around about 10 times, not the 22 times the crowd thought I did. Seamus came back with a really fast small package and got the win. Next up, we have a tag team match featuring the Rhodes brothers, Gold Dust and Cody Rhodes taking on Rybaxel. If there's one thing that I miss, I think more than anything, it's the old Gold Dust. He was so entertaining. I mean, outside of the ring, his promos and everything were so entertaining. And now he's just like a dude dressed up like gold dust. This match picked up near the end, though. Cody Rhodes went in there and had a big old rally. During this rally, Cody hits a really nice drop kick when Axel jumps off the top rope. He kind of botched his moonsault, but honestly, it looked pretty devastating. He tried a few times with the disaster kick. Didn't work out too well. There were quite a few saves in this match from a three count that were pretty exciting. In the end, though, it was a shell shock that ended the match with Ryback getting the three count. After the match, Cody Rhodes asked for a mic and pretty much said, Brother Goldust, you need a better tag team partner. Now this could lead to another good angle for Cody Rhodes. I really hope so, but I really hope the old Goldust comes back. Next up, we have Rusev taking on Big E. The only thing I don't like about this match is the fact that because Big E rushed in on Rusev last Monday, they're having this match. I tell people all the time that, you know, these pay-per-views are worth it because they're a culmination of a whole bunch of, like, of story buildup and history between the two, and I feel like this didn't have much. Anyways, Lana comes out and pretty much tells us we suck and Russia owns us. It's so funny, because the truth hurts. They probably have faster internet than we do. The US is ranked like worse in the world with high speed internet, which is probably why people's WWE network feeds drop out all the time. If you get a moment, go look up Google Fiber. 70 bucks a month for 50 times faster internet. Mm. <laughs> Gets me pumped up. So when Big E comes out, it looks like this is going to be a flag waving showdown. The high spot of this match, though, was when Big E did a straight up jump. I don't want to call it a spear. I'll call it a, a spear. But Rusev was on the outside of the ropes and Big E just charged through them and two big guys go crash into the ground. But Rusev gets back up and hits Big E with one of those big kicks and puts on the 
big ack leg and Rusev gets a big win. I don't know about any of you, but when they replayed Lana screaming for some reason in slow motion, the very first thought was this. <laughs> Lana and I would make a really cute baby. Next up we have the match that I've been waiting for since it was announced, Kofi Kingston taking on Bo Dallas. And no, uh, Jerry Lawler, what were you saying when uh, he's had two matches and now he's on a pay-per-view? I sure didn't hear you complaining at WrestleMania when Fuck Dung Go debuted, Bo Dallas gets on the mic, and this first four words were said almost as amazingly when Lana said Russia is better than the US. And then Kane is sent out by Stephanie McMahon and ruins everything. My name's Kane. I ruin all the fun. I believe... So Kane decides to tombstone Kofi, and thanks to Kofi's hair, it looks like he legit dies. And afterwards, after Kane leaves, Bo Dallas and gives Kofi a pep talk. Thank you, Bo Dallas. I know a lot of people love Kofi Kingston, and I know next week Kofi Kingston will be back up, and he'll be ready to take on everybody once again, thanks to you, Bo Dallas. Bo, leave! My life will be complete when I get to chant We Believe at a pro wrestling event. Next up we have the Intercontinental Championship match. Rob Van Dam fought his way through a whole bracket of wrestlers to take on Bad News Barrett. If somebody makes Bad News Barrett's cape and sends it to me, I will totally make some dumb video with it. At the beginning of this match, I was curious where all the people on Twitter were sitting with B N B and R V D. And here's what y'all said. If my memory serves me correctly, the last time Rob Van Dam came back, didn't he get an IC belt shot then too? Maybe it's all the hamburgers I've been eating. Really hope Winston Churchill actually had some bad news. Oh my goodness, I found some! Oh no. It looks like Wade Barrett has eaten all the Italian crumpets. Okay, and then Wade Barrett does the bull hammer and hits the post, like the middle part of the post, not the turnbuckle. That should have been match ending. In the end though, Rob Van Dam tries to hit a springboard moonsault off the top rope and he is countered by Wade Barrett lifting up his legs and Wade Barrett hits Rob Van Dam with that bull hammer. Done. Next up, we have the segment where Stephanie McMahon is asking Daniel Bryan to hand over the belts or she's gonna fire Bree. Uh, first off, Bree mode is weak. Here's what Bree mode should be. Number one, I meant Mike this is tonight. Yeah. Number two, I mean yeah, uh, Mick Marlin. Number three, Chuck's not listening. Number four, this ain't Vegas. Number five, this ain't New York City. Number six, I better be in Brooklyn. I would really like to see some bearded babies, as suggested by Stephanie. And I'm sure some of us thought that Brie was going to quit, and she told Stephanie that she would. And essentially, here's what happened. She quits, she slaps Stephanie, Stephanie runs out crying. Now, I think we can honestly say that maybe Bree slapped the piss out of Stephanie. Uh, but wait though, did he hand over the title? It makes sense that if Bree quit, he did, but he had the belt still. By the way, how selfish of all of you knowing that a man's neck is broken and you don't want him to get time to recover. Shame on you, America. Maybe Lana was right. Next up, we have the last man standing match where John Cena is taking on Bray Wyatt. The Usos and Luke Harper and Eric Rowan have some pretty good spots throughout this match. We had chairs, we had tables, we had stairs, we even had barriers being broken. Calm your boners. We didn't have any ladders used. What I love about these last man standing matches and like the I quit matches is that the refs like right away. What? Like uh, somebody could just get like body slammed and the ref has to count. Hilarious. Uh, I think the biggest move of the night was the senton put on John Cena after Bray Wyatt ran and jumped off some of the stairs. Oh, gee. 
Maybe it was the superplex by Luke Harper. So Cena and Bray Wyatt fight over to some of the technical guy's little area. Kane must have eaten some beans, because I think he farted. But then Cena does an AA onto Bray Wyatt, and he lands onto one of those boxes and lands in it. And then Cena puts one of the boxes on top of Wyatt, and he gets his 10 count. I guarantee you that if Cena was in that box, and there was another box on top of it, and Wyatt and the whole Wyatt family stood on top of it, Cena somehow would have pushed the box open and climbed down and then Bray would have, would have died. Do I feel bad for the Divas about having to follow the last man standing match? Am I gonna be able to put over Paige after this match? Was this match as interesting for everybody to be paying attention 100% of the time? Were there rosebuds in the audience? I'm about to tell you. I feel bad for them. You'll see in a bit. Look at this guy during the match. Oh, 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 oh. This was a pretty decent match. I did like where Foxy was trying to be like, She wants to ruin my face. I sounded like an old Jewish witch. Most of the offense was by Alicia Fox. However, it only takes that one move, that PTO, that page tap out. If you would like to see somebody put me in the PTO someday, go ahead and like this video. If I get 100 likes, I'll find somebody to do it to me. <laughs> I would like to see Bo Dallas try to help out Alicia Fox sometime in the future. <gasps> Fantasy booking! And after Fox loses, oh, ooh, I was expecting so much more. Boy, howdy was I ever expecting so much more. But then we just essentially get this. The final match of the evening is the No Holds Barred Elimination match featuring The Shield taking on Evolution. I talk about Evolution confusion during the opening of this match. I'm pretty sure the technical director backstage must have been drinking lots of coffee because he was just like cut, 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 cut. He couldn't process anything. There were so many fast cuts. Lawler had a couple good quotes from this match. Think long. Think wrong. When you have a hammer in your hands, all of your problems end up looking like nails. Last one should be a shirt. It would scare a lot of people when you carry a hammer. I just want to take a moment to talk to you about real life versus Instagram. Here you have real life and here you have Instagram. Now, if you were watching this match, you should realize that Evolution had this match just one. They had it one. There's this thing from like ancient Greece or something called hubris where you have too much pride to just to just finish something, you just don't see it. You have too much pride. You have too much pride, and that's what happened with evolution. Evolution has too much pride. That's where humanity's going. Just like in America, we keep doing things, and we keep doing it, we think we're getting better and better, but we don't see what's wrong with us. Pride is killing America. Lana was right. Russia's gonna win. There are quite a few good spots in this match, I can't list them all here, Just, you, if you got the network or whatever, go watch it. It was a good match. A few points were a little like, there was no movement, I don't know what I thought about that, Just nothing. But I really liked the match. Although I did feel a little uncomfortable in one spot where I thought it was a little too torturous. I was expecting some waterboarding. But in a huge twist of irony, one of Triple H's favorite moves, the knee to the face, got used against him, which caused him to lose the match. Except it was Rollins' version, face to knee, eliminating Triple H for the final elimination of the night. Thank you for sitting through episode number 24 of The Raw Loaf. I would like to point out that I think my most favorite favorite sign ever was at this show. Help me, please. I'm getting married. Hilarious. If I were to rate this WWE Payback pay-per-view on a scale of 1 to 69, I'd probably give it a 42. But that's only because I just watched TakeOver. TakeOver was amazing. It was probably the closest to a 69 I've ever given it anything that I've reviewed. Uh, as always, go ahead and click subscribe there at the bottom or the little icon I finally figured out how to put up there if you didn't close it. You can go ahead and like this video, like the Facebook, go ahead and tweet the raw loaf, go ahead and tweet the raw loaf, or go ahead and leave comments in the bottom. Share it with all of your friends. I really appreciate you sitting here until the very end. I hope you have a great evening and a most excellent June. <laughs> you are not what's best for business. <laughs>